He hasn't had a double-double in the last three games. I made sure I pointed that out to him when he was at shoot-around, and he said he was going to get one tonight. They need him, too, to give themselves a chance to win on the road against his very long LSU team. Champs and Dean, you see that wrap on his left shoulder. He's been dealing with shoulder issues all year long. Here is Bowers, now matched up with Malone as they swing it around. KT Harrell, veteran member of this Auburn team, 6'4 senior, down into Bowers. And he can't connect to begin. Then a long excellent job rebounding the basketball at the defensive end of the floor. Johnny Jones has been trying to stress attention to detail to this group this week. We talked about that effort from Jordan Mickey when he went for 25 and 20. That was a loss against Mississippi State. And Mickey gets started the right way tonight as well. What I love, though, is that Gray got into the paint and there was no hesitation there. He knew exactly where he was going to go with the ball. KT Harrell with the three-pointer. Talking about one of the elite scorers in all of the SEC. A little pressure from all. And there's a turnover as he was trying to get it up ahead to Martin. Said Bowers came up with it. So reset the shot clock there. Here's Harrell coming around the corner now, weaving his way past Malone, picks up his dribble out to Bowers. And he lost control as he went up against Darcy Malone. And now Mickey on the run. Two-time SEC Coach of the Year at Tennessee. He's 5-3 and three all time against LSU. And Mickey off to a good start in this contest. He, he played well but L L against Mississippi State, but some of the other components that they need to play well did not. Jarrell Martin struggled. Bowers gets it out to Shamsid Dean, the runner. And a rebound that time by Granger. Mason now for three. And they could use that kind of effort from Antoine Mason. We'd kind of like to see Antoine Mason break out a little bit. Bruce Pearl told me back in October, look, we, we hope he averages between you know, 15 and 17 points per game. He averaged 23 a game last year at Niagara. He has yet to get a plus 20 point game on the books this season. He had 12 30 plus point games last year. Came into the scene as the top returning scorer in college basketball. Here's Martin now cleaning up things there. You can see how quickly he can control it and then take it right to the rim. Uh, well, just a mismatch, too. They don't have anybody that can defend at the three position against Jarrell Martin with this long lineup. You've got Malone out there with size. You've got Mickey with size and Martin. And this is a very short Auburn team. And that's the one thing as soon as you see LSU, we talked about it. Here's Mason again, and his night is off to a very strong start. Finding his groove is Antoine Mason, but you know, we talked about it. as soon as you get in the gym and you look at LSU and you watch them and shoot around, you notice how long the wingspan they have, and they are bouncy too. They can get up. Malone. That's a rebound by Granger. And that's not the shot you want if you're LSU. Jameson Dean tried to come in against some of that length. Bowers. In a single season in <laughs> made of the mist. Yes. Were you admit. wearing the goofy, the goofy oh, yes. jacket? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, need, I need photos of that. I'm going to search your Twitter account for that, Farnham. And did the helicopter tour over the top of it. Now, see, that's a no-go for me. You know me with helicopters or bridges with short legs. Hornsby drops it in for long range. <laughs> Hornsby is the one guy that has been ultra-consistent from the outside over the course of this season. I mean, he has been the long-range guy, and they look for him in pivotal moments of games, just like they did against Missouri at the end of regulation to force overtime in that loss. Here's Bowers on the inside. He's batted away right to Mason, who tried to scoop it single night. 25-20. There from the line. Great. Nice job aggressively getting to the lane. Decisive. 
It's a word that I would love to use more when you talk about Josh Gray. Be decisive with your actions. Sometimes he's hesitating down low in the paint. He doesn't want to shoot that shot. He tries to pass when there's not an angle, and he creates turnovers and runouts for opponents. Be decisive and be confident in your game. Oh, Good pass. work from Bowers. Oh, was that nice as he found Harrell. That's, that's one of the more underrated aspects of his game. We saw it at the Florida game. He didn't necessarily have his best game offensively, but he did a nice job distributing the ball to his teammates. How about five lead changes early on here? And Martin will add to that. Jarrell Martin showing the range, the 6'10 sophomore. And, and this is the lineup I like best out on the floor right now. I like Porterman now coming off the bench and his ability to impact the game. Martin sliding down maybe to that more traditional four spot. Canada in, gets it over to Casey Ross Miller. And Mickey with the rebound. That's and Jordan down. Mickey took steps. He didn't have his hands in the passing lane. He had his hands down just a little bit too low, and that allowed Bowers the vision to see that pass. TJ Lang in the game for all. Here's Bowers now, as he got right past Mickey that time. And Mickey, that was a two. You see how beautiful the release is on his shot, the high release. He's always been a player that has thrived in the mid-range game. Bowers trying to gather that handle a bit. Clears out with that left hand. Got away with that one. Able to space out and finish. 15-footer. Falling away and it was Ooh. well off the mark to the left side that time. And gathered by Quarterman. Ray again on the drive. This time gets it out to Hornsby. Quick release. Side rim. Rebound that time. Malcolm Canada. I'd like to say that's a dribble handoff, but it went off of three different players' hands. And finally, Mason was able to get it towards the rim. Hornsby now. Good speed right to the rim. Keith Hornsby. He has five. Rule number one in basketball, transition defense. The most important player out on the floor is who? Joe Tessitore. The one with the hands on the ball. He had to be able to stop the ball that time. Auburn asleep at the wheel. What a block. This is getting choppy a little bit on this end. A little deep. Cleaned up that time by Lang. Hornsby again, right past Mason. Good entertaining pace here early in Baton Rouge. Offensive. Countdown to Orisburg and Jalen Rose about who's the best shooter in the NBA. Debating. Leave no debate, debate about it. Debating. Kyle, Kyle Korver's great, but he's a, he's primarily a spot-up shooter. Steph Curry's ability to create and find his shot, truly amazing. And think about Clay Thompson and him both now with games over 50 points this season. Games. And he was a vital part to their early season success. And when he came back, they started winning games as well. Now, they've hit a rough patch here, obviously, in conference play. But he is so important with the limited numbers that Bruce Pearl is working with this year as far as guys that can actually score the basketball on a consistent basis. three. Well, when he's not there, there's only two. That's right, and that's not good. And get it down to Mickey. And he was able to get Reed off his feet. Back. We've been around Bruce Pearl both over the course of the last year and, and specifically in recent weeks of calling some of the start of this season. Auburn was second worst. So they're elevating that, and that's all part of scheduling. It's part of building a culture, which he has down at Auburn now. Their fans, their student section, they're coming out. They're supporting this basketball program. That's a, that's a key cog in the building process. Here's Quarterman. 6'6 sophomore guard has a unique game. 
Dylan Patterson took down for LSU. He's going to pull up and take the jumper. It's good to see Patterson back out on the floor. And missed a couple games due to concussion symptoms. Two game absence as Canada took it. Canada finishes that off. Gray working on Shane Sadeen over there. It's KT Burrell, why not? And airballed it. I guess that's why not. But cleaning it up that time was Bowers, as he often does. You know, it's, it's one great recognition by KT Burrell is the fact that Bowers was underneath on the weak side. So as you take that shot, even if it's a, a quick and ill-advised shot, your best rebounder is sitting in the right position for that rebound. The big body. City and Bowers, 6'7", 278. Patterson back rims that long rebound out to Taj Shamsuddin. Patterson's missed the last two games. Maybe he should come in and try to just run the offense a little bit rather than looking to score and box him out. That's what's going to happen. A nice job. You see the numbers, offensive rebound. He averages four offensive rebounds per game. That's best in the SEC. Auburn 8-2 run. He's Terrell Martin. That rattled out. And Mickey was fighting for it. They're in offensive rebounding percentage and 13th in the nation in defensive rebounding percentage. Two times this year, he had 17 rebound games. He comes up with the ball here. Tension. Super Bowl's over. That's in the rearview mirror. You have a lot of mainstream fans that are now coming to the game and watching night in and night out. If you're to tell the guy in the street, hey, get me up to speed quickly. Where are conferences? Who are the hot teams? What do I need to know? What are the headlines you tell that guy? Well, I really think it comes down to the depth of the SEC this year. How much more improved the bottom portion of this conference is. You look at teams like South Carolina, who knocked off Iowa State and Oklahoma State this year. They beat Iowa State on a neutral floor. They've had a lot of close losses. Frank Martin's done a really nice job. You look at teams like Good Texas A&M. that time by Bowers. Texas A&M, Arkansas, Ole Miss, LSU. They are playing at a tournament level, and while the focus deservedly so is on Kentucky, nationally for how dominant they've been, let's not forget that they're not only winning games against their opponents inside conference play, they blew out Kansas. North is the one team that I'm so impressed by the conversation. Well, and I think a large portion of that is because of Florida. When Florida slips Absolutely. a little bit, everybody nationally goes, oh, well, the SEC must not be that good this year. Well, no, everybody else is just elevating their game right now, and it's only going to get better with who they're bringing in next year, their, how strong their recruiting classes are. Farnham, I had to survive that Florida episode to start that game up at Vandy on Tuesday night at the National. Vandy this year, and Damian Jones is in, in on the Gators. You know, game day is going to get the day started. Reese and the boys will get you set for Kentucky and Florida. That is Saturday night on ESPN. You know, look at Kentucky. They've, they've lost eight out of ten at Florida. That's probably going to change this weekend. And, but don't think that Florida is just going to back down and not bring their best luck, best effort of the season. Last four minutes have been a struggle offensively for LSU. Hornsby trying to solve that, but he cannot. Oh, for their last six from the floor. Too much one-on-one -on -one play right now for LSU. They've got to have better movement. That helps Tim Quarterman off balance and puts the long ball in. And Quarterman had a great game against Georgia with 6 of 10 from beyond the arc. That was on January 10th. Since then, he was 5 of 25 before that shot. He had 27 in that game. And now Gray set up that LSU offense again. Here's Mickey. In fact, uh, Dick Vitale will be uh, versatility-wise. They, they could cause some problems. Look, Kentucky haven't finished well around the basket. They've had opportunities, but they haven't scored and finished this. In particular, their bigs. Now, they are shooting the ball really well from the outside. And opponents are not shooting ball well against them. That is correct. Devin Booker uh, has just been lights out four consecutive weeks that he has won the freshman of the week honors in the SEC. And I'll tell you, it's like the old school Tiger Woods. Not the, I hurt my back and pulled myself out of a tournament again. Look like he did today. He gets through 11 holes at Torrey Pines today and he said it's a, it's a no-go. Uh, you got to finish the round. Come on. KT Harrell. As Auburn continues He's in here. 29-23. He has 10 to start his evening. Okay. And, you know, and, and Torrey Pines, that's Tiger's backyard. That's Tiger's place. 
Correct. And, and Devin Booker's place right now is going to be freshman of the year in the SEC. They're already starting to engrave the trophy after the last four weeks. Is Harrell feeling it? Gives it to Granger. He muscles his way up and in. Eight-point lead for That's Auburn on the road. Who's the more aggressive team right now? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, LSU, you're on your home floor. You're coming off of a loss to Mississippi State. You have... How do I help my team win? And at times, he's been caught in that in-between stage, which has actually hurt LSU. Bowers inside. They push that. Up ahead to Gray. The game. We, look, we hung with Tennessee. We, we had a lead for a majority of that game. We, we led for a majority of the game against Alabama, and they just let those leads evaporate in the second half. Part of that is because the numbers issue. Quarterman for three. Prior to that, they were just one of their last nine. And Quarterman gets them back in it again. Back to a four-point margin. You know, you see the ball go down once, all of a sudden it's a lot easier for you to get in the rhythm and be a shooter from the outside. Great. Bowers aggressively went after it that time. There's Darrell Martin, put it on the ground, and it ends up going the other way. Jamsa Dean leaves it for Harrell. Bottom of the net for KT Harrell, and he has 13 here in the first half, Sean. What a veteran move. Understanding the shot blocker was coming from behind. Great. Can't connect there. Rebound, Martin. Other side, miss. Tipped in that time. As it was Tim Quarterman again. Turnover now. Gray. Oop time. And in for Jarrell Martin. See if that provides some energy not only for the fans, but more importantly for the guys on the court. Canada, he was denied. A great job anticipating. Jordan Mickey does. Quarterman, could he do it again? Shamson Dean now looking for somebody and finding Granger, but he couldn't finish. And he stepped on the line. The leader, of course, he played at the University of Washington. The key word there was played. Yep. He's no longer a college basketball player. So Mickey leads the nation so, in terms of active players. No question. Hornsby. Picked up his dribble that time. And then reset things here with Josh Gray. Still trailing by three is LSU. Mickey. 16-footer. Could go. Oh, you stop it, Farnham. Lock that up, Farnham. Tiger Meat is here. Bowers at the other end. I mean, Mr. Martin. I'm just going to let that one marinate for a little oh. bit, Jess. That was tiger meat on the Tigers there. <laughs> Here's Canada. And that's what he does best. Simeon Bowers. And he knows it. And he's feeling it. And with it tonight, played aggressive throughout this first half against LSU. A little bit of pressure that time as Canada might the actual Tiger. Yeah, I posted the picture on Twitter. I mean, it was Did sensational. You really? He was walking around, came right up to the fence, right in front of where I was standing. Good response on Twitter. Well, you know, that's like the tiger. I was thinking, you know, you, you talk about Tiger meat, and you're talking about Tiger meat hanging around as Martin was able to get the dunk. It's also been the, the size and the meat of the Auburn Tigers yep. that has been successful down low in the paint. Simeon Bowers controlling the interior. And that's allowed them to shoot 50% from beyond the arc so far in this game. Ordinance right on that here, of course. 
Played here, coached here prior to becoming a head coach. He's part of Dale Brown's legacy. Spent 13 years on Dale Brown's staff. And Auburn outscoring LSU down low. That's something with the size. When you think about Martin and Mickey, they've got to be able to score with better consistency down low. That's just not happening, not with Mickey lingering there in the paint as Canada's effort was denied. On the other end, though, how about that from Keith Ormsby? You know, the one thing, too, it's, it's not just about blocking shots. It's blocking shots that, that keep the ball on the court and allow your team the opportunity to get the run out. And that's what Mickey does a really nice job of, is Joel Russell S. Yeah, you know, c controlling it and giving your team an opportunity, not just knocking it out of bounds and staring and pumping your chest and right. waving your finger. They could benefit your team. What a good first half. Entertaining. Got a soup spiller, and now we've got some good play back and forth. And a bounce for Mason. Shooter's touch goes in. And that is his 11 third. points for him. That's his third three-pointer in the first half, and he's a perfect three for three from beyond the arc. Martin past Bowers. And then takes care of it on the other end after he met up with Jordan Granger. He has 10. A near double-double in the first half already for Martin. Mason. It just rattled out. And Hornsby saved it. Up ahead to Gray. The crossover that time. And the putback that time by Tim Quarterman. He was trailing the play and smartly made it happen. Ten points already for Quarterman. And Albert has not done a nice job cheering up. Their offensive glass. They're starting to give up too many opportunities. And they're watching the ball rather than putting the body on somebody. Mason, shot clock at five. He's asking a little too much of it that time. Playing beat the clock now. Good transition, but it wouldn't drop. That leaves one bit argument there for Coach Pearl. And they'll just let it hit zero. To this LSU team, I think all season long, they needed somebody in their backcourt that could stabilize things. Hornsby and Quarterman have done a nice job. Here is Hornsby, and he's not bashful. It's Mason gets the rebound off that missed three. Of Auburn, who came out with such great fire and passion. They played loose, they played free, they played confident. They've got to be able to maintain that for the next 20 minutes. Bowers was working against Mickey and Martin corralled it. Terrell Martin stripped away that time by Mason. Gotten a little piece of that. Here's Quarterman. Tried to reverse it, but not with Bow. portion of it. Johnny Jones sees Jerome Martin pick up his first. Whistle. There's Harrell. Remember he had that big first half and it continues here. 16 points now for KT Harrell. When you, you're going to win on the road, you need somebody to go above their average. And KT Harrell is right below his average right now. He averages 17 a game, but certainly well on pace to just blow right through that, especially with the way that he's shooting the ball from beyond the arc. Defense, 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 defense. 
think he almost lost his balance matching up with Powers there. And having help from whoever is defending the screener. See that battle for position continuing with Mickey on the inside. And here's Quarterman, and that rattles out. A rebound that time by Granger. John Dean as he leaves it to Bowers. Seven point lead now, ten points for Simeon Bowers. And great job by Bowers establishing post position deep, just as Mickey has done on this possession. And the players in the SEC Bowers and Mickey. They performed so well all season long, and in particular again tonight. And they're, they're both kind of like that energizer bunny, the passion. The staff. There's no question. You need you need Elliot Lee. He's a lead by example guy. Bowers is the passion and the emotional leader of the team just by his physical play. Morrell has 18, two times this year, at the season high, 25. Short of that. And they missed Bowers on the break. He had great position. And he had horns be buried underneath, but Mason didn't want to try the pass. Ranger. Quarterman pulls it down. Mickey showing you that athleticism and balance and he has 12. That's a strong move. I like that move a lot better than the, the previous possession where he pulled the string on his jump shot. Looks to attack and be aggressive. He had to sit out the season. He hard every single day to try to get better and be able to contribute this year just as KT Morrell has worked hard. Boy, he really had to put that up and over and there's some contact between Martin and Bowers, and they're going to make sure things don't go too far. Anything in that instance, it's going only against Martin. Bowers shouldn't have been penalized there. You don't like so Bowers three personals now. If you don't like physical play, that's fine. It's been physical at both ends of the floor. Back into the post to Martin. He's able to bounce in that time. As Jordan Mickey. You know, Bowers goes to the bench. So what do you do if you're LSU? You go right in the paint and you get the ball into Mickey's hands. Nice job. Good offensive possession that time. Mickey's wanted that position for the early parts of the second half. They went to it there with success that time. They were trying to. That would make sense. The two exceptions, by the way, both UConn teams. Well, I mean, and you consider the runs they had, right? It, it's, you know, we, we focus so much on the offense of Kentucky, but defensively, their ability to dominate. That side of the ball force you into shots that are not the normal shot you would take. I would assume that both those UConn national title teams of recent years would be statistical anomalies with a lot of those historical trends, wouldn't you? No question. And there are teams in both cases really that just got hot at the right moment and, and played well and carried that all the way through to the national championship. Speaking of a team getting hot at the right moment on the road is Auburn. Work down low in the paint. Jordan Mickey has all seven of their second half points. and trying to block shots, which is a scary thing because LSU's been aggressive all night long in that category. They've got seven blocks on the game. This is Casey Ross Miller, who has checked in, matched up with Porter in here. Here's KT Morell. He's had a hot hand as they double him and force him out of it. Malcolm Canada. Good pass to find the open man, and that was Ross Miller. KC Ross Miller. The defense rotated and scrambled a little bit on that screen action up top, and because of it, they, they were out of position. Orderman splits and then leaves for Mickey. And he stepped on the baseline. He's going to go the other way. That again has some really good quality wins, in particular in that non conference portion of their schedule. They, they, they got a double overtime victory over Xavier. And of course, they beat Oregon State, who has proven to be a pretty strong team inside the Pac-12. 
Martin tried to come through, but the seven foot two Reed was waiting on him. And now here he is. Oh, he but he could not out. finish. Why not? The turnover right back. Canada. Arell's calling for it. And you know what? A after that, that last miss in the open floor, they went away from him. They, they could have given the ball back to him, but his teammates didn't have faith that he'd be able to do what he needs to do with it. Floater by yet to be successful at the division. Pretty simple. There's no one in front of you. You're seven foot two. You should be in the rim. Ryan couldn't connect here. Now they're pushing it with Patterson, who goes up to Quarterman. That's how you finish at the rim. In the open floor, leave it up top for your teammate. Bowers, the way to respond by Auburn. It was just great execution that time. Bowers has a strong base, great shoulders, able to shield. Quarterman. And Mickey was right there. Jordan Mickey. All too easy. Lang now. He trailed the majority of his game. So Patterson. Bowers gets his hands on it. And then loses the handle, but taps it away to Lang at the last possible moment. And a good decision to bring it back out. thought that green you know I question are we focusing on the next play or are we focusing on whether or not we're going to win just focus on that next play Malcolm Butler focused on that next play and got them a win and that's what's called year one laying down the foundation of what your program's going to become Mickey tried to get it out Patterson had to save it at half court there Quarterman little two-man game as he takes it up and look at who's there to make sure it ends well. He's got 18 and 11 now. Jordan Mickey. Another double-double. Bowers, the other guy who does it night in and night out. And he's got 14 and 7. This is just a great matchup between two guys we profiled at the top. Just two of 17 players in Division I to be averaging a double-double on the season. And Jalen Patterson. LSU has cut it to two. And this is that moment for Auburn. Just as they did against Alabama. They led for over 30 minutes of that contest. The focus, though, down the stretch. Are they going to be able to keep that edge that they've had for a majority of the game, or are they going to wilt under the pressure of this crowd and this LSU Tigers team? Here's a guy that's helped all night long. KT Harrell. You have to put it up so high when you have Martin and Mickey to contend with when you drive. And they're playing one down. KT Harrell has not crossed half court yet. He's limping on his way back. Lang just got leveled that time. And we're going to need KT Harrell, though, in the final nine plus minutes of this game. And he's send him back. Man, he's going to send him back to the bench. Looking to break through as Auburn is led for over 23 minutes tonight. With Mickey on the bench right now, you're looking at Cordeman and Martin as your two primary scores. Cornish hand fried up, Harmon. Maybe the home crowd thinks that Martin Dunk was a little better. And a time for scoring effort in that loss at Mississippi State. And they had four in that. 
A good timeout, though, by Bruce Pearl. A very 9-3 run. Things kind of slipping away from you here a little bit. You got to settle your guys back down and focus, like you said in that quote you read just moments ago. Focus on that next play. Play the next play. And here it is. Uh, that was not good. As Ross Miller left his feet. See if LSU can capitalize and gain a lead. Ten turnovers, five already this half. Jordan Mickey against Bowers. He's tapped back out to Patterson. They yeah, keep tack attacking Bowers, to be honest with you, because he's, he's got three fouls. He doesn't want to pick up his fourth and go to the bench. Patterson, smart take that time. Did you see how Bowers backed away? He didn't contest. He didn't try to body him up because he knows that if he picks up his fourth, he's going back to the bench. So mark it down. LSU lead. 60 to 58. At eight and a half to... You can't give up the lane and turn your, your short to stop. Maybe potentially pick up his fourth foul or give you two points every possession. Harrell. An 11 3 run by LSU, and then Harrell puts Auburn back up by one there. The hips feeling fine. Sure is. Big scoring night. 23 for KT Harrell. They got to go right to Mickey right now. He's got Bowers isolated on that far side, and they go away from him. Martin. Three pointer for Martin. Falls into the hands of Antoine Mason. Mm -hmm. Mason lowers the shoulder, tried to scoop it in. Tip in from Granger wouldn't go, but the tip out ends up with Auburn. Now into the post, Bowers. Harrell on the drive, and that's a double dribble there. Cool. One of Michaels. In all seriousness, though, one of the great moments is you think about moments that you could go back to go. The three-point shot has, the, has been the great equalizer for Auburn all, all night long. And they are nine of 18 from beyond the arc. And this is the guy that's been off. Six blocks. It's coming off a 25-20 double-double. The last LSU triple-double was Shaquille O'Neal back in 92. Went for 26, 13 boards, and 11 blocks. You know, I, I always thought that guy had an opportunity. Yeah, he, he had a future, I think. <laughs> 33 retired up here on the Raptors. So. Good speed. Nicely. Get the ball down low. Work it in to Mickey. Matched up against Bowers again. It's, it's, it puts it right through. It's all day long right now on Bowers. You just continue to attack. Continue to attack. Every possession, they should post up Mickey and let him go. Bowers does not want to pick up a foul. Mickey has 20. At 11 in the first half. Three-point lead for Auburn. His quarterman is pushing it. Couldn't finish it. And a good decision to pull it out that time by Mason. Didn't have numbers. You've got the three-point lead. You've got to understand time and possession and execute. against Martin, his way to Bowers. Oh, and he just lowered that shoulder. Remember this moment, six minutes left, three-point lead for Auburn. Sports Illustrated in the preseason had Auburn number one in the country back in 1999. Can he rekindle that and build upon it? He's got a great recruiting class coming in next season. Yeah, hope is on the way. 20th ranked recruiting class. Of course, LSU's got some power coming in as well. Don't settle for the jumper. And that's exactly what Martin does. They've had all that success with Mickey in the post. Mason now. As he pulls back and puts it down. And it's back to a five-point lead for Auburn. Mason has 15. He has the last four for Auburn. He got the two at the free throw line and then the jumper. Into the quiet second half. Yep, get the ball down low. Just, uh, just every. This is 13th double double of the year. 22 already in his.
short college career. Just because he, he is a stylish kind of guy and feels like he doesn't need the jacket. <laughs> Mason misses the front end there. Ninth team foul on LSU as well. Talked about Auburn's recruiting class, LSU's recruiting class next oh, year. Watch Seven, out. Seventh in the country. Ben Simmons, the number one player overall. 6'10 forward who plays down there in Florida. Part of that class two should be noted as Craig Victor, who transferred in from Arizona, is now practicing here. They've got Auburn and Alabama and then Kentucky. Three games in a row on your home court. You One of these Thursday, the Saturday, Tuesday stretches, but they do get the three at home. First time LSU's had three straight conference games at home since 1998. And why is that important? Because right after that, you're going at Tennessee and at Texas A&M. Tennessee's awfully difficult to beat at home. Ask Butler. They lost there. Ask Kansas State. They've lost there. Ask Arkansas. They took a loss there. Mason feeling confident. With 17 points on the night. Get the ball down low. Looking for that entry to Mickey, and here it is. Skips it over to Patterson, and they will rotate it back out to Corbin. Back down to Mickey. LSU. Roll into Florida. They're, they're able to have the success they had there. You lose at Mississippi State. Now you're on your home floor. You trail by four with four minutes left to go. You know, where's the consistency within this group? And if they're going to finish in the top half of this conference, in the top three spots where they probably should talent-wise, they've got to build better consistency in their game. Unless you 9 of 15 from the strike tonight. Doing an outstanding job up top. Harrell didn't drop in there, and he's slow to get up and retreat on the other end. Get the ball down low. Hornsby, and he connects there for two. The long two, but Mickey was there, and I'm a big fan of getting, the ball, easy. getting the ball to your best player on the floor. Sam Bowers being set to check back in. Four fouls on Bowers. Mason splitting defenders. And he gets it. Tim, that one probably should have gone against Mason. And that's a season high now. 20 points for Antoine Mason. Remember we talked about earlier in the game, that's his first 20-point game that he's had for Auburn after having 24 20-point 14, four fouls he left early. Gray yep. makes it a three-point margin. Can't trade points. You gotta get stops. Let's see if they can get one here. Extend out against Harrell. Can you defend he leaves in against Quarterman. Granger for three. And Bowers back in there comes up with the rebound. Can you defend without fouling right now for LSU? Nine rebounds for Simeon Bowers. Mason. Well off the mark. Hornsby running. Numbers LSU. Quarterman. Fifteen points for Quarterman. He sparked things coming off the bench. Now he's looking to finish things strong here at home. If you're Auburn, you want to get something going downhill and attacking. A time. 0 7 away from the Plains. I, I want the ball in Mason's hands here. Get him the ball up top and let him try to turn the corner. And there he is, him. and he does turn the corner, but he gives way to Harrell, who turns it over into the hands of Quarterman.
Good feed from Mason. And Auburn back on top with Simeon Bowers. A beautiful pocket pass to your drive, and that's why you want to get Mason downhill attacking the paint. That's what he should have done in the last possession rather than trying to hand it off to, to Harrell. Brownsby gets back to Mickey. As it is stripped away by Mason. Boy, has he come up big. And then he was tripped up that time. By... And he gives him a three-point lead. 36 seconds remain. If they're going for the three, it's going to be Hornsby. And they like to run him along the baseline. It's the play that they ran at Missouri. Here it comes. They're looking to get him free. Martin, put back. Inbound here. And he's struggling to do so. And finally gets it to Harrell. And he is fouled. Did every bit of it here at LSU. And that's his first miss from the line tonight. Great. And he will. Ten seconds remaining. And he can't do it. And Bowers gets it, but then nearly throws it away that time. Going to defend, and, and if somebody gets their hand, it's a three. Mason is defending Hornsby. And they do foul Gray that time. There's the miss. And there is the rebound by Auburn. Oh, they track it. Here we go, 2.6. Batted away, and this time securely. And they've got to regain some of that confidence that they had because the next two aren't going to be any easier. Mason with 24 points. KT Harrell with 28 points. Mason had 13 of.